Bobby Black coming to you once again from the Cannabis Business Awards, which are raging on stage behind us. Uh, but right here, I have two very distinguished gentlemen to introduce you to. Uh, to my right is uh, Caddy from uh, La Sosa. Uh, did I say that correctly? Los Suenos Farms. Los Suenos. Los my Suenos apologies. Farms yeah. is the largest legal marijuana farm in the world today. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And uh, to my left, a gentleman I've known for some years, uh, one of the most uh, uh, prominent advocates for legalization in the country, I would say, uh, um, co-author of Amendment 64 and uh, co-owner of Club 64, the one and only Mr. Rob Corey. How are you, sir? Thank you. I'm doing very well. Welcome back to Colorado. It's good to see you here. We have come such a long way in our state. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, I remember coming here for the first High Times Cannabis Cups that were done in Denver and, and watching that transformation from year to year, uh, just how amazing it became. I mean, I know the event's uh, attendance for the Cups went from like five or 10,000 to suddenly 50,000. And, and I watched the, uh, the amount of people coming in, but also the amount of regulation and, and, and real um, effort that was put into crafting a, a system that works. It, it is amazing, and this event right here that you're at right now, and you're at ground zero of Colorado's marijuana industry, and it is an industry, and it used to not be an industry. It used to be a couple people hanging out in Castleman's, <laughs> Caddy's old bar, just chilling. You were there. You were there at ground zero. Best business awards at my old bar. Right. See, I, I forgot to mention when I introduced this gentleman that uh, he was the former owner of Castleman's, which is the happening bar to go to if you're a stoner in Denver. I mean, no it was question. A few, it was a few years ago, but originally yeah. it started out, uh, I, I met a gentleman, an attorney, Rob Corey, in, in 2009, uh, simply at a hotel bar having a cocktail who was uh, thinking about crafting Amendment 64. Obama had said he was going to sort of back down off, off medical marijuana. and. And this gentleman here simply asked if, could I use your venue on a Monday night to sort of have a meeting, a, a public forum, uh, a couple, you know, put some chairs out, some tables on the stage, and uh, we, we need to talk about what's about to happen. I said, sure, on a Monday night, maybe, maybe I'll sell some beers. 300 people showed up, you know, want to be dispensary owners and growers and edible people, city councilmen, attorneys, and it kind of all started right there. Legit. Goosebumps because, I mean, this is how liberty starts. The, the Declaration of Independence was written in bars. It literally was. Yeah. And, and this is where our movement began, you know, and, and this has become, and now Caddy, as, as he deserves, runs the biggest farm in our state, you know, and the, the world. <laughs> Thank you. How, how big is it exactly? How big it, like, can you give me so, a ballpark? I can. That's so what she said, how big is it exactly? <laughs> well, yeah. you know, what I lack in fingers, God made up for in cock size, so I'm fine. I, I mean, penis. Sorry about that, Peter. Anyway, so Los Sueños Farm, it, it's the largest legal recreational grow in the world. It's literally 36 acres of all natural sun-grown cannabis outdoor, as well as 55,000 square feet of greenhouse. We have a total plant count of 21,600 on our farm. We have four John Deere tractors. Creating jobs, creating freedom, creating all kinds of opportunity. I mean, this is the vision that we wanted. You know, and, and I mean, these awards, the fact that it began in your bar, it gives me goosebumps to and be you're here. you're creating now. good karma because the product you're producing doesn't kill people, it doesn't rape the planet, it doesn't feed large corporations, at least not yet, <laughs> but Amen. it probably Amen. will at Amen. some point. I mean, uh, but, we are on the right side of history here. You know, we're on the right side of what is good. Genesis chapter one says, the Lord God gave you seed bearing plants. I mean, the, like anybody who's- I use the leaves as medicine. And generally what we tell people, and sometimes we get in trouble, especially in the South when we're speaking, I sit on the lobby committee in Florida, which we just passed with a you know, record breaking 71.3%. If you're against cannabis, you're against God, and he'll tell you why. 
<laughs> I mean, and, and these people, they're like, well, um, I'm not sure about that. Well, read Genesis. It's right there. Yeah. But, I mean, the bigger issue is, you know, th this is a legitimate industry in our state. Th this is one of the top four or five industries in the state of Colorado. And Colorado has become one of the leading cannabis producers in the country. California is going to catch up. I mean, they're, they're going to surpass well, us. California's They've got the eighth largest economy in the world. And and there's a lot of people chomping at the bit to get a hold of those 30 licenses. million people in, in, in California. They, they should. Have, but they it, you know what? It doesn't have to. It, but it's not a, it's a friendly competition. It's I a, hope they it's do. A, uh, we want to help them as much together, as possible. Man, right? Yes, we hope they do. We hope everybody surpasses yeah. Colorado. Our little tiny state of 4.5 million people is grown by 10,000 people a month. Why? Because we provide a product, right, that doesn't kill people, has no long-term effects, it's not damaging on your organs at all. And the children that come here, number one, how many, 10,000 people a month move here, right, Rob? There's a crane on every corner in Colorado. Bobby Black have been fighting this for decades. I mean, you, yeah. you, finally you have found your way to California. California is poised to become the worldwide global leader in cannabis. You're right there. You know, I'm already there. I went to Stanford Law School. I'm already practicing law out there. And, you know, but Colorado, we, we did we did jump a little ahead of you with our statewide regulation. And, you know, it was, it was a good run and we're still there. But I think California is going to be a, a major market, a major opportunity, a major place where people can access this beautiful plant and really enjoy it. I think the most exciting prospect to me is having that wall come down between interstate commerce and it will come down and I believe it will come down soon where Colorado and California will be able to share their genetics and share their products and, you know and not have it be subject to weird laws about state crossing state lines and, and breaking laws you know and there needs to be an interstate commerce bill for cannabis that goes through that makes this because that is what will really open up the country to the I mean when you can have rare dankness in Jersey and in this and then you know what I mean like it opens up the possibility for when the people lead the leaders will follow and Congress is going to do this I predict in the next three years Congress is gonna is gonna wipe out the barriers to interstate commerce and marijuana already we have over 25 states so we've got more that we've got a majority of states that have legalized either medical or recreational or both also a majority of the United States population lives in states where cannabis is legal so the tip point has been passed. Congress is going to do the right thing, and it's it's going to be very good for Colorado. And it's Pretty similar to the electoral vote. <laughs> so so let me ask you. But great, we win with population. You, you brought up you brought up the electoral vote. What do you think the the cannabis uh, legalizations and cannabis businesses prospects are in the Trump presidency? Do you see him getting more on the board the side of hey it's making money it's big business I'm into it, or do you see it more of yes. or do you see uh, sessions being more, uh, you know, attorney general saying, you know, weed is for dumb people and for bad people, and then we need to curb this, you know. As the attorney, the former, okay, Donald Trump fundamentally is a businessman, and he's a pretty good businessman, okay? <laughs> Cannabis is business, all right? Jeff Sessions, good, honorable man, works for Donald Trump, not the other way around. Donald Trump pledged on the campaign trail that he's going to respect state laws. He believes states should be the laboratories of democracy. Congressman Dana Rohrabacher said it better than anybody else, said it better than I could say it. He said Jeff Sessions is, is an honorable man. Jeff Sessions is, is going to follow his president's campaign trail promises. He said this. And I don't think Jeff Sessions is going to depart from Donald Trump's campaign trail promises. I think he's a man of his word. And, and we are pretty confident in our state that, that this is going to continue, that Donald Trump is not going to do radical, stupid things and decimate an industry that employs literally tens of thousands of people in our little state. And, and it, it's only... Donald Trump is a stupid speaker, but he's not a stupid man. And if Sessions decides he wants to go that route, I guarantee the wall that Donald Trump wants to build between here and Mexico will be nothing compared to the walls we built around Colorado, California, and every other populous state. Well, that why pick somebody yet. who's so anti-weed then, if you're not 
expecting him to take that road. He's not educated about marijuana properly. We as an industry, we need to go to Washington. Rob, we need to go to Washington. You know, the 10 to 15 of us in Colorado, we need to get the people from California, all the industry leaders. And we, we need to go educate these people, like truly educate them. And once we educate them, they will open their eyes to the propaganda that they have swallowed all these years that the United States has given us. More so, we, we swallow more propaganda in this country than Russia and China put together. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. The fake news and all that stuff is sad, and, and the stuff that comes out of people's mouths is crazy these days. But uh, I'm I'm a little scared with Donald Trump in office. I got to be honest with you. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope for uh, sanity. One last thing about Donald Trump: if he could attend a meeting like this, I mean, 90% of the people here are dressed in dark suits. You know, I mean, this is a this has become a legitimate industry. You've been there way before that. I know you have. I have. You know, I was the only guy wearing a suit 15 years ago, and now here we are. I mean, we are. We are that's why you and I got along, because you said, hey, this guy wears <laughs> exactly. a suit. Exactly. And, and not that wearing a suit means anything, yeah. but, but it's an indicator, you know? It is. And, I mean, this, this is a legitimate industry in our state. And alcohol prohibition was an utter failure. Everyone knows that. Donald Trump knows that as a businessman. I mean, I think we're fine under a Trump presidency. Maybe even better, because it, look at look at George W. Bush presidency versus Barack Obama presidency. And Barack Obama is an unabashed marijuana smoker himself, yeah. like many times. The Tomb Gang. He, he, yeah, exactly. He writes about it. He didn't just try it, and he didn't not inhale. I mean, this guy like knows marijuana. Marijuana, but yet there were tons of federal raids under Democrat Barack Obama and no federal raids in Colorado under George W. Bush. So you can't assume that just because he's a Republican, he's going to do bad things. I think we're going to be OK under Donald Trump. I really do. Follow the money. Donald Trump will follow the money. The money is good. It exists. Yeah. He's, I, I'm well, confident it's going to be successful. Colorado well, is open for business, basically. Well, Mr. President-elect, if you are watching this, uh, I hope you can at least see the sense Please. in that argument. Put the, put the tie-dye out of your mind for a moment and uh, come see what cannabis yeah. looks like today. We extend Lifelong registered Republican. Ditto. Literally. We extend the invitation to Donald Trump, all his appointees. Come educate yourself. Please educate yourself. Make a decision after that. That's all we ask, a fair decision while you're educated. We've got terrific people. We've got terrific people. Well said. Right. Let's make America great again. Let's make America bake again.